This portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's. I'm loving it. The five people accused of a double homicide on Andros made their first appearance in the magistrate's court today. As Fern Carey tells us, apart from murder, the group is also facing serious charges, inclusive of armed robbery and kidnapping. Police are holding five Andros residents responsible for killing 49-year-old immigration officer Shane Gardner and his 28-year-old girlfriend, Trishka Brennan. The five are 26-year-old Daniel Coakley in the red shirt, 26-year-old Sint Juan Duncombe wearing the light blue striped shirt, 22-year-old James Johnson pictured in the white t-shirt, 26-year-old Terrell Mackey in the black sweater, and 24-year-old Cordero Sanders pictured in the black t-shirt. The couple was reported missing to police in late November following an apparent armed robbery that went bad. Gardner's vehicle was later discovered in a bushy area by a beach in Davis Creek and following an intensive search by police weeks later, two remains were discovered in central Andros, although they have not yet been officially identified as the victims. In court, the defendants were charged with killing Shane Gardner and Trishka Brennan between Sunday, November 24th and Saturday, December 21st at Central Andros. They are also accused of conspiring to rob the couple at gunpoint on the same date and then kidnapping them. Bail was denied and they were remanded to prison. Following the arraignment, James Johnson complained through his attorney Ian Coggle that he was brutalized while in police custody and he claimed that he has lost some feeling in his left hand as a result. Coggle also informed the court that all of the defendants are concerned for their safety in prison as relatives of the deceased Trishka Brennan work in maximum security there. In noting their concerns, Chief Magistrate Joanne Ferguson-Pratt promised to notify the superintendent of prisons. However, she stressed that she could not direct the superintendent on where to house them. Now, Sanders also raised the issue of an alibi during the arraignment, questioning why he was charged in connection with this matter in the first place, as he says he has to sign in three times a week at the Grove Police Station. His attorney, Michael Kemp, also indicated that Saunders has been reporting diligently at the Grove Police Station and he asked the court's assistance in ensuring that the record book there be made available to the court. All of the defendants are expected to return to court on March 5th for service of voluntary bill of indictment papers. Meantime, they will remain behind bars at Foxhill Prison. Fern Carey, ZNS Network News. Police have charged a third man in connection with the home invasion and robbery of Deputy Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis two weeks ago. He is 27-year-old Yellow Elder Gardens resident Jeffrey King, also known as Bongo. King is facing three counts of armed robbery and one count of abetment to armed robbery. In court, King was formally charged with robbing the Deputy Prime Minister at gunpoint of jewelry and other valuables worth over $100,000. Court papers also show that they robbed the DPM's wife, Anne Marie Davis, at gunpoint of just under $3,000 and the DPM's aide, Wilberforce Seymour, of $10. King was not required to enter a plea. A voluntary bill of indictment will be filed. Now, King arrived at court limping. However, his attorney, Wayne Monroe, informed the court that he had not been beaten by police and that it was because King had been shot in the groin twice in the past. Meantime, two other men were arraigned earlier in connection with this incident. Well, one week ago, Raquel Simmons was a bit nervous about repairs being done to her home by officials of Urban Renewal, but today she realizes those concerns were unnecessary. She and Urban Renewal officials spoke to Julian Reed about the repairs which have changed her life in a good way. Her smile shows it all. Raquel Simmons is indeed a happy woman. Oh, yes, sir, I am. I'm really happy to see the work. They move very fast, and I am so happy. Mother Pratt, Mr. Allen and all of them, I'm very happy. I didn't have the means to do anything. And I was so pleased that when I heard Urban Renewal was on the scene doing repairs, I, it really left my spirit. It's good to help the unfortunate. And it's very good that Urban Renewal is helping the unfortunate. And it, keep up the good work. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Co-chairman of the Urban Renewal Commission, Algernon Allen, points out that this small home repairs project is perhaps the biggest of its kind in the Bahamas ever. This is in the history of the Bahamas, the most comprehensive, the most ambitious small repair program ever. It is benefiting persons who have not the means, but proud Bahamians 
who want to live like proud Bahamians. And it's causing contractors uh, who are doing a marvelous job. 300 contractors have been employed to work on 300 homes at a cost of $3 million. Government and private sector funds have been used to make this program a success. Co-chair Cynthia Pratt says that the public will see exactly how that money has been spent. It's important for the people to know that the monies that they give to urban renewal, that it is going to the people and not in another direction because people tend to try to put a negative spin on urban renewal and it is so unfair. Those of us who care, because not everybody care, some people have and they're not concerned about others having. We are saying to the poor people, those who are living in squalor conditions, we're trying to help them. Contractor Franklin Poitier says he and his workers are happy to do the job. So far, it helps me. I uh, have at least but seven people employed. So far for the Christmas, they was appreciated, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, the government is doing a very good job. Julian Reed, ZNS Network News. The country is remembering the life and legacy of King Eric Gibson, the veteran cultural ambassador, entertainer, and musician, passed away on Saturday at the age of 79. Well, tonight, Clint Watson tells us about the man who was a family man, lover of music and sailing, and a good friend. It's a sound that no one else can quite match, and one that created a signature note for the legacy of a Bahamian cultural icon. King Eric was known as the entertainer of entertainers, dazzling audiences at home and abroad. Whether he was playing the steel pans or capturing your attention with his soulful, rich voice, King Eric knew how to leave you on the edge of your seat, longing for more. His death on Saturday, despite his ailing condition, came as a surprise for his family, particularly his son, Labor and National Insurance Minister Shane Gibson. He is somebody who has been a really, really close part of my life for a long time. You know, we were more than father, son. It was like we were best friends, you know, um, business partners. Um, he knew everything about me, knew more about me than I knew about myself. King Eric's career spanned more than half a century. His family was always close to him and a big part of what he did. He um, had us um, as a part of his entertainment group from the age of, let's see, eight or ten. Um, from playing golf with him, six o'clock in the morning, literally speaking with him every single day. He's one of those persons who just couldn't help himself from hel helping people. Youth Sports and Culture Minister Daniel Johnson also had high praises for King Eric. In every generation, someone emerges, and so it's now for us, what, what the King would want us to do now is to find the next King Eric Gibson. And so we have to set about um, honoring his life and his talent and his vision. He was one of those persons who went all over the world representing the Bahamas. Uh, promoting the Bahamas through entertainment. Um, I, I myself, uh, from the age of 17, traveled with him all over the U.S., um, Canada. Uh, he went over to Australia. And so he's just somebody who believed in the Bahamas. And I, I just want them to remember him to, for the good. But I mean, we have some personal memories that, you know, you just can't share it. You can't talk about some of it. And from the time to time, uh, just reflecting on it um, helped to um, get us through this. And as the curtain closes on this chapter of Bahamian culture, his impact lives on. He kept a song on his lips, a dance in his feet, and generated energy among crowds even up to his last performance when he was honored. And as he took his final bow and waved goodbye, he perhaps did so knowing that his work in taking Bahamian music to the next level had been accomplished. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. The Bahamas making a big name for itself in South Florida. Yesterday, tourism officials attended the big game at Sun Life Stadiums in Miami Gardens. Chris Saunders also had a front row seat. The Ministry of Tourism took over one promenade here at Sun Life Stadium as the Miami Dolphins take on the Jets. The purpose of this entire trip, though, really is for one lucky fan to win a round-trip ticket for two and a complete vacation to the Bahamas. Minister of Tourism, Donald Obi Wilchum, says this partnership with the Miami Dolphins is very important as it helps strengthen the Bahamas' footprint in South Florida. And the connection with these sporting bodies like the Miami Heat and the Miami Dolphins, here's a captive audience here today, 60, 70,000 people in the stadium. We get a chance to talk to them and talk about our connection 
and they have to see how we can utilize the Miami Dolphins brand and that franchise to help us promote the country. The Bahamas Ministry of Tourism has been promoting the Bahamas through the Bahama Bash at the five home games here with the Miami Dolphins. They're also been promoting the Bahamas at major international sporting events such as the Miami Hurricanes games and other major international tournaments here as well. At Sun Life Stadium in Miami Gardens, I'm Chris Saunders, ZNS Network News. Coming up in sports, King Eric Gibson, the sportsman, is remembered. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it.